Hi everybody, my name is Robert Webster and in this video I am going to be discussing uh, Kendo UI data source and Kendo Grid and how it can be used in conjunction with my digital structure. And this is the first part in a two-part series. I'm going to be using the My Digital Structure framework in order to build the test site and to test out the functionality of the Kendo UI framework. So let's go ahead and start downloading the framework now. So you can just go to Kendo UI dot com uh, if you want to read more about it they've got a web version a mobile version and data viz so I'm going to download the full version now for this you actually have to sign up for a Telerik account um, I've already got an account so I'm just going to log in and then I'm going to download the full uh, well the, the trial version of this uh, software okay so as you can see there's a 20 meg file downloading it's uh, quite large in size, but it includes a lot of different versions. It's basically everything that you need to get Kendo UI working. So here it is here. We've got the JS, which includes a full copy of jQuery that's compatible with, and uh, all the styles that are required, including a few ones that are listed on the website, including the Metro and Blue Opal, things like that. So we're going to need the JS files. So I'm going to start creating this new page within one blank space it, again if you don't have a developer dot one blank space account you can um, create one for free so I've just logged in with mine and these are the sites that I've created before I'm going to create a new one and we're going to call this one Kendo UI contact so I'm only going to be sh uh, showing the um, how Kendo UI can actually do a read. I'm not going to be doing anything to do with managing at this stage, but we're going to put the framework in place to do it. So, once again, just work, working through creating the space within one blank space. Again, if any of this is really unfamiliar, uh, please revisit the visit videos uh, that I posted previously. Okay, just going to create a page for the site. So, the home page and it's going to be text only so as you can see we're going back to Kendo's and we can see that they have given us some scripts to add so these are the default ones for Kendo UI web I'm actually going to add the Kendo UI all JS um, because in the future we might want to use this same framework in order to create a mobile site uh, but I'm only covering the web version at the moment so I'm adding jQuery min and then I'm going to add jQuery all I mean the Kendo all so there we go we've got our two JavaScripts uh, uh, required by Kendo up there now we're going to put our style sheets so I'm just going to put the default on there you can mess around with the Metro if you want to or uh, any of the other themes or you can roll your own th theme with a new theme roller so going back to Kendo I'm going to grab the different link references that we need and script references and I'm going to copy and paste them in because we are developing on one blank space we actually just have to change and tweak it slightly so we're pointing to our site that we've created so just changing that around and saved and now we'll go check out the site so after checking out the site we can look at the source code just make sure everything resolves apart from the required kendo scripts we're also going to need our own custom logic so I'm going to use or reuse a JavaScript that I created before which just simply allows a user to log in and then does something after they've logged in and in there we're going to throw in the grid stuff from Kendo so I'm just going to add this into the app and you can see it there Kendo UI I'm just going to add the script reference to resolve to that point back to it So I'll save that and then I'm going to head over to the My Digital Structure website. So this uh, website actually has information on documentation regarding the endpoints and various objects that you can access and search upon in the My Digital Structure platform. So the one that we're going to be looking at today is the contact 
endpoint and the main one is contact person search. So this is how we're going to read the data into our data source object which we're going to create with Kendo UI and then link it to our Kendo grid. So this web page shows you all the different fields that are available when you're searching and also when you're managing what fields you can actually change for this record. Now contact person manage we're not going to be delving into too deeply but we're going to put the hooks into our data source so we can in the future. So how do we actually configure this uh, data source and the grid? We're going to jump back into Kendo UI and have a look of how to do this. So we're going into web demos and we're going to go into grid. Uh, there's a lot of different information on how to actually configure your grid, um, including binding to remote data, which is the most important for us at this stage. But even if you look at basic usage, you can kind of get your head around how it's working, and they're not that different in actually implementing them. Okay, but first we need some content on our page. So I'm going to just start typing in a login script and give it a container so we can host our grid. So you see it's pretty simple, just two inputs and a button and the div which is blank which is grid container. So let's move into the script. So previously on this um, stolen script I used to do get user details after login. So I'm just going to remove that and remove all the bits and pieces from the end because we're going to create a new function which is going to be called create grid. And this is where our kendo grid is going to be initialized. Okay, so in order to have a Kendo grid, we actually need to have a data source. So going back to the My Digital Structure website, we're get, I'm actually going to show you how we build up this data criteria search. So if we go into contact person search, then advanced search, we'll be able to see a thing at the top that says uh, how you post J JSON or XML directly. We're posting JSON. So we're going to construct it in that manner, which is how I've actually constructed it in the script. So this forms the criteria of how we're actually going to carry our search. And we're going to be searching for only three elements, the first name, the surname, and the home phone. Now they're the only three elements that are going to be returned in our search. As you can see, first name, surname, and home phone. Okay. So now we've got to build up a customer data source. Now there's a lot of documentation online on how to do this and I'm just going to run through how each one is and usually you've got to have a read, update, uh, create and destroy and each of them have their own separate URLs that get called. So in this case you can see all of them are calling contact person manage except for our read which is calling contact person search. You can see in contact person manage is calling that. So again, you can view the documentation on Kendo UI to see how to construct the data source, but this is how I found the best way to construct it with my digital structure in mind. So there are a lot of options in the data source, uh, including parameter map. This is actually not doing anything at this stage. I just put it in there to illustrate how it could be used. And I have tweaked uh, the schema, the data return slightly um, just to cope with uh, my digital structures return regime. And these are the three fields that are going to get returned. So if we go down to create grid, we actually need to reference that variable of what we called the data source. So we've called it customer data source. Uh, so we're going to put that into our grid. So we'll go back to Kendo UI just to get an example of how that Kendo grid is created. So we can just paste the, the content in there. So the binding to remote example actually builds up the data source within the Kendo grid. So I'm going to use the basic example because we built our data source as a global variable and we're just basically linking the Kendo grid to that global variable. So I'm just going to copy this and then paste it in and then tidy it up. So as you can see, the data source or the Kendo grid 
um, has uh, columns so you can actually just define which columns you want returned and I'm just going to copy this and paste uh, paste the variable name in there. So we've got our columns defined, only three ones that we want and there, there it is. So the only thing we need to change is just map it to our own um, grid container ID. So we'll just go back into the script, change that grid to grid container, save it and then we'll upload it back onto one blank space. Okay, so that upload is complete. Go back, we'll do a refresh. Now we're going to log in and hopefully our grid will get created. So log in and there's our grid and it's come up with all the contact details that we want, first name, surname and home phone number, of which there are none. So we'll see what call has been made. So we can see that it's a contact person search. The post has been made. That's with our criteria that we defined as a global variable. So first name, surname and home phone. And now if we go into the response, we can see how it was returned. So we only got those three variables plus our ID back because the ID is mandatory in my digital structure. So that's basically it. It's all done. Um, you will notice that this is only reading of data. We're not utilizing the data sources create, update or destroy functions, but we're going to be using them on part two of this video. So at the moment, we're just binding to remote data, but in the next episode, we're going to be using inline editing, which will allow us to edit, delete and add new records. Okay, and instead of using contact person search, we're going to be using contact person manage to manipulate our fields uh, as we're moving forward. Thank you for watching. If you have any comments, please post them against this video. And also, if you need to get access to the scripts, they'll be available in the description under this video. Uh, I hope to see you back for part two where we'll be looking at inline editing and uh, the contact person manage method on my digital structure. Thanks for watching. See you next time. Bye.